Like a materiality assessment, climate risk management is all about determining how physical, transition, and liability risks will influence business continuity and the welfare of the key stakeholders that business depends on. From a 10,000 foot view, climate risk management comes down to the identification, planning, and execution of a mitigation and adaptation strategy. One must answer the same fundamental question for each risk type. How do these risks influence the business and its stakeholders? Let's talk through each risk type and the associated considerations that should be made. Physical risk assessment. Here, we must identify and address how increasing storms, floods, wildfires, droughts, and land degradation influence company operations and stakeholder welfare, both over the short and longer terms. For example, increasing storms and floods could impact a supplier's ability to get materials on time and at the same price point and on a consistent basis. Even industries that are somewhat sheltered from physical climate risks, like information technology and software services, could suffer direct financial and other stakeholder impacts if a third-party data center were flooded or damaged, or if some other key digital infrastructure partner's assets became inoperable for a period of time. Transition risk assessment. Here, we must consider how the global transition to a net zero economy presents a whole range of risks, such as emerging regulatory requirements, stakeholder expectations, the availability of labor, or even systemic impacts to the global financial system, any one of which could affect the business in the welfare of its stakeholders. Changes to customer preferences, investor requirements, and global ESG disclosure regulations could all influence our ability to meet these increasing demands. And liability risk assessment. One must consider the range and the potential severity of any liability risks. How might changes in the availability of insurance products, the terms of credit agreements, or the seniority of security charges in liens be impacted by the recognition that as climate risks come to pass, someone has to pay for them. The Task Force for Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, also known as TCFD, provides a framework and set of recommendations for identifying, planning for, and reporting on corporate climate risk management efforts. The TCFD was created in 2015 by the Financial Stability Board, an entity established after the 2008 global financial crisis to ensure global financial stability. Chaired by Bloomberg founder Michael Bloomberg, TCFD is influencing climate, and ESG disclosure regulations and individual country mandates around the world. TCFD recommendations are being enacted directly or heavily influencing policy frameworks in the European Union, the United States, Canada, Japan, South Africa, Germany, France, Switzerland, and Singapore. The United Kingdom and New Zealand are mandating climate risk disclosures in line with TCFD by 2023 and 2025 as well. And these developments are only expected to increase across global markets. Although each regulation is at different stages of its implementation, it's likely that TCFD will be the most widely adopted climate risk management framework moving into the future. In fact, it's already the leading climate disclosure framework employed by many of the most well-known ESG rating and scoring agencies. But it's not the only. There is another framework that's growing in recognition too. And it's one that all financial services professionals should be aware of. PCAF, or the Partnership for Carbon Accounting Financials, was also launched in 2015 as a Netherlands-based initiative. It's been most widely adopted in Europe, 
but it, it expanded to North America in 2018 and has since gone global as of 2019. PSAF is important as it is the first standard regarding financial services and finance emissions specifically. The PSAF standard provides guidance on how to calculate and disclose the emissions associated with various asset classes, including listed equity and corporate bonds, business loans and unlisted equity, project finance, commercial real estate, mortgages, and motor vehicle loans. The PSAF standard requires financial entities to disclose the percentage of their current total investments in loans that fall into these six categories. The TCFD framework offers four main pillars for management teams to focus on. These are governance, strategy, risk management, and finally, metrics and targets. Although TCFD is intended to specifically inform relevant disclosure practices, it can also be used as a roadmap for developing an enterprise climate risk management strategy. Additionally, it's also a great starting point for analysts looking to derive actionable insights about the companies in their coverage universe or their portfolios. Governance broadly refers to the collection of policies, systems, and protocols used to lead and manage an organization. Governance, in this context, refers to the policies, systems, and protocols used to identify and manage a company's climate risks, as well as those impacting its stakeholders. An example question the TCFD recommends management teams answer when preparing ESG disclosure is, describe the board's oversight of climate-related risks and opportunities. Strategy, in this context, refers to how a company's corporate strategy will stand up in the face of identified climate risks and potential future scenarios, including potential adaptations to the core business model. A recommended question is, describe the resilience of the organization strategy, taking into consideration different climate-related scenarios, including a two degree Celsius increase in temperatures. Risk management is how a company identifies, manages, and adapts to these climate risks and the extent to which these risks types are fully integrated into their enterprise risk management efforts more broadly. In fact, one of the TCFD's example questions is, describe how processes for identifying, assessing, and managing climate-related risks are integrated into the organization's overall risk management. And metrics and targets. Peter Drucker famously once said, you can't manage what you don't measure. This section is all about the long-term goals, key performance indicators, and associated metrics being used to assess overall climate performance. This includes metrics speaking to emission scopes, identified climate risks, and how the company will measure progress over time as they work towards their longer-term goals. A recommended question is, disclose scopes one, scope two, and if appropriate, scope three greenhouse gas emissions and the related risks. If management and investor relations teams aren't thinking about or answering these questions, then it's tough for the analyst community to do so. But a two-pronged approach of employing ESG integration into analysis and modeling, coupled with applying pressure on management teams to relay this information clearly and consistently, is a reasonable starting point. Now that we have an overview of the TCFD framework recommendations, let's explore how to translate these recommendations into an enterprise climate risk management strategy.